We were hearing about this new comedy club. It's opening in Reigate uh, later on this month. And uh, Phil Nichols is going to be headlining it. Phil, good morning. Hello. Uh, good morning. Good morning. How are you? There? We're really well. Now, Phil, we've got, we've got a clip of you in action. And the reason why we do this is in case you're not funny in real life. <laughs> uh, well, that's true. I'm not. I'm not, not even funny in not real life. Here we go. This is you. That's what I love about British people. You laugh, you, you laugh at each other. It's fantastic, you know. Moving in London, I, I find myself... London's a very aggressive place. Where people don't actually complain to each other. They get really annoyed, but they keep it inside. Like, you see, you meet a friend, like, how are you doing today? He's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. How are you? Really and I find it happening myself. Well, only recently I was caught behind these dawdling old age pensioners, and I was behind them going, Come on! Come on! I thought to myself, surely the people with the least amount of time left should be moving the quickest. You know what I mean? So you got lots of laughs there, Phil. Um, yeah, you, oh, good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> launching, though, this new comedy club in Rygate, your opening night. I mean, not much pressure yeah. there, eh? No, not at all. Well, Rygate, the centre of comedy in Britain. You know, I mean, these people will be primed, primed for a brilliant show, I'm sure. And um, Phil, we were talking earlier on to Nick, who organises yeah. it, and we, uh, he was saying how it's great that some venues, some people head straight for the front seats and yes. other people head straight for the back because they don't want to be seen. And it, it, it's that thing of actually not really wanting to become the butt of the comedian's <laughs> joke. Are you looking for somebody to pick on? No, not at all. I would welcome you all to come and sit in the front. In fact, if I get the whole audience to sit in the front row, that'd be fantastic. Right. Every single one, every single one of you. <laughs> Nick was also saying that um, actually these sort of more informal settings work a little bit better. Do, do you prefer that way? You can kind of get up close and personal. Well, I, I like being uh, I like being able to dive into the audience, of course, like not literally, but just I like to be able to contact them because the live experience in comedy, unlike television, is about getting to know the people there and making it special for the people that are there, which you don't really get on television. You're just watching it from a distance. So it does make a difference if the audience helps you in the sense that they, they uh, show up and are available to be chatted with. Yeah, now, the thing is, is that if you've ever been to a comedy club, I've been to a few, you know, if anyone said, any Americans in tonight, you'll always get a, woo, 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 like that. <laughs> yeah. and, you think, and everyone, all the English, sort of go, oh, here we go. Uh, well, I, I don't, I'm, as a Canadian, I don't, uh, you know, I don't expect people to be screaming like crazy. I love the Brits very dearly. I like your reserved nature. But I find if you mention, if I, I don't even know what's close to Rygate, but if I mention, you know, walking, they'll go, boo. <laughs> you know, I don't know, what Rygate, I don't know what Rygate's natural predator is, but um, if I mention it, it'll definitely get a reaction. What's a big no-no then in comedy? What would be the worst thing that you could do when you came out on that stage? Well, you could get the name of the town wrong. <laughs> that's never a good. That's never a good one. Have you ever done um, that, done, Phil? Well, I I have accidentally done. I've done three gigs in one night, two in Manchester and one in Liverpool, of all places, and forgot where I was and went out and started to say hello Manchester, and then realised I was in Liverpool. Very very bad. The show went very 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 <laughs> very 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 badly that night. And and so, how long into your sort of set do you know whether it's really going well or not? Well, you actually have about 30 seconds before you know whether this audience is going to go with you or not. And audiences are very sharp and they're very um, astute. And usually they can tell before you even reach the mic whether you're going to be funny or not, usually. And it's not like a conscious decision. It's a sense about looking at someone and their confidence. And I think human beings are able to read body language. They know whether the comedian's nervous. And, uh, and you have to hide that. So I'll, gi I'll give it about 30 seconds, I'd say. <laughs> we have been asking all morning about the, the comedians that people have seen live sort of in the, in the early days. Who did you grow up watching then? Who, who are the sort of people that, that encouraged you to go into comedy? Well, I, well, I actually uh, I wasn't allowed to watch a lot of stuff like that. I was raised in, a, in a quite a devout Christian household. My parents were very strict with us. So, uh, but, 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 they, but they, however, they were uh, Glaswegians. And for some reason, Billy Connolly slipped under the radar, and uh, and we were able to watch Billy Connolly. And and I don't know why they let us watch, but Dave Allen was on television, and I think my mother liked it because he, she liked all of his anti-Catholic jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well, you could, you know, two absolute kings of co comedy. Um, yeah. Phil, enjoy it. Enjoy Rygate. Um, we should mention uh, that club's on in a couple of weeks' time on a Thursday night. Um, full details for you we'll put on our Facebook page.